dial in for Hero Clicks. I'm your sex and ranch and co host, Call the Master, and like always, is this guy, Simeon, wow. Simeon Bruce. Wow, what wow. a live stream! Oh my gosh, Scott Porter and yeah. Muse went live not too long ago on the WizKids YouTube channel, and they shared off a ton of goodies. We're talking upcoming legacy cards, LE figures, con exclusives, all these crazy things, along with a ton of news to go along with the Huntington's event, but today we're just going to get into all the cool Hero stuff that they spoiled during that live stream. It's a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Simeon, what is the first figure we're taking a look at? First figure we're going to look at is from the Avengers 60th set, and it is number 001 in the set. It is Black Panther, so he is he's doing a lot of Black Panther stuff. He's got Outwit and he's a close combat piece. He's got like a cool super senses. Um, it's probably up here. You can probably yeah, see somewhere it. somewhere around there. The biggest thing about him, though, is that they've changed the Avengers team ability. So it's yeah. been like six-ish years since the last change. Right. Yeah. Um, and this one is now for all friendly characters with this team ability. At the beginning of the game, you choose a team ability. This character modifies attack plus one when attacking one or more characters with the chosen team ability printed on their base. This is a huge boost That's to good. the Avengers team ability. That's really and Frankly, good. it was needed. It was, yeah. yeah. Avengers team ability really wasn't getting used much outside of that initial carry the team up for like Scarlet Witch, Voyager, etc. Yeah. This is way more proactive. It happens during the game now versus just the first turn that it's I also, forget about the team ability. It's entirely. way more thematic because it's like, hey, it Avengers, we're taking on Hydra. You all get a boost to yeah. your attack because we're, we're a team. The massive evil. Rather Hydra. than like, hey, guys, we're a little bit faster. <laughs> Like, that never really But not sense. when we move and attack. We're not fast no. when we do that. So yeah, Avengers Team really getting a buff is awesome. Next up is Jessica Jones. There's a lot going on with just the common here for 40 points. Her, like, coolest thing to me is that she just gets to make someone a detective. So she's a detective, and then when you make a theme team, when establishing them, you just choose a friendly character, and they gain the detective keyword. So that's cool. So this is going to help, like, the Martian Manhunter detective card, uh, the Scooby Gang, all sorts of cool stuff. And yeah, she's got a little bit perplexed. She's got some leap climb, close combat expert. She is very much an alias uh, Jessica Jones, yeah. not so much an Avengers Jessica Jones. Yeah, it's not, very, very alias run Jessica. Not Jewel. Here. This is a. But if you wanted to pause it on either Black Panther or Jessica Jones and read a little bit more in depth, feel free to do so. They're really neat figures, and I think it's a good showing for what we can expect from Avengers 60th. Yeah. Uh, this is a little fun. Hopping out of Avengers 60. And, Way in and, uh, totally skipping Notorious. Yeah. Going to Wheels of Vengeance now, which I, sounds like towards like the end of the year, maybe next year. Is, yeah. Like from where October, they said the November, release dates maybe. would be. Yeah. Um, so this is a legacy card. This was the previous winner, or not winner, uh, the runner-up of the silver yes. event from Huntington's of 2022 designed this. And that would have been Dan Powell, uh, old Danny himself. He designed this Iron Man from, uh, what is this? Avengers Age? Assemble. Yeah, from, like, Avengers 2015. Assemble. Long, long time. Yeah, dude. the chase theme for that was weird because it was like... It was like alternate core was like Avengers. Kind of like super-powered versions of normal Avengers. Yeah. It was like Widow with the Thor's hammer. Right. Iron Man in like a huge mecha Cap suit. Cap with like the Nova helmet. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Uh, Rune King Thor. So, uh, yeah, Giant Man Hawk. Like just weird, yeah. like more powerful Avengers basically. So... This guy's got a single trait, and then he's got three special powers. Obviously, his dial stays the same as the uh, Avengers Assemble one, but his trait is Energy Shield Deflection Impervious. So he has that his whole dial, and then he can reduce penetrating damage his whole dial. He's not protected out with, so like, it is possible that you could still just yeah. zap him a bit with that. But otherwise, Impervious that can be reduced for a whole dial is pretty crazy. He comes in at 120 points um, on his... Front end, he's got his special concussive wave attack power that is energy explosion penetrating psychic blast, and then he has improved targeting elevated blocking, shoots through blocking, uh, hindering characters and out of adjacency. So I think wow. that's all of them. That's I, think that's, I don't think they missed any. No, I think it's uh, so yeah, free. He also has free. Choose one for Iron Man to use until your next turn. Outwit and ranged combat expert. Okay. So top dial. If you're choosing range combat expert, he's a 12 for 5. Not bad. He doesn't have any movement attack. He has sidestep with 7 range, triple bolts. Uh, it's more so just like the fact that he can just see through everything is pretty nuts on that top dial. And then he's got some willpower and stuff like that to help him kind of keep up there, hopefully. 
uh, on the tail end when he gets like the the old bad stats that they used to print. Yeah, um, really bad. He'll still be a ten attack for four on click six, seven, and then a nine attack on eight, even uh, with RCE. But he gets force blast, leap climb, sidestep. Kind of just the eh. Like, those, those last three clicks, you don't want to be on him anyhow. He's a very top-heavy kind of figure. He is. Uh, and he comes in at 120 points. But, uh, yeah. I think uh, the coolest thing we see on this car, in my opinion, is completely ignoring Iron Man. But the, we see the logo for Wheels of Vengeance, which looks so dope. It's like it's a side shot of Ghost Rider's head on fire. So yeah. I'm really excited for that. That's probably the coolest thing about this card. Uh, no offense. But also... Yeah, no, no running shot anywhere on the dial is kind of weird. Yeah. This Iron Man. I would have taken um, no ESD for like some sort of like movement. Some yeah, some yeah. better movement attack than just like sidestep. But he's kind of fun, and if you own this Iron Man chase, then hey, there you go, you get to play him again. He looks awesome, and I know he wasn't super playable when he first came out. I think this makes him like almost half the point value. He's like probably two sixty or something. Yeah, when also, he first came out. So with that new Avengers TA, he's kind of like a thirteen. That's true. Yeah, he'll be like out. it'll help his attack values a ton for range. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter because it, even if you're adjacent to him, it's can be for range. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's Iron Man. Um, uh, the first legacy. I don't think he showed any legacies from Avengers. That was 60. the only legacy we saw, yeah. and that was clear in the future for Wheels of Vengeance. So we don't know really anything for Avengers 60th besides yeah. like the Play at Home Kit stuff. Next up, uh, what they showed in the live stream. This is really ridiculous. So there's always a winner that gets to make a legacy card, then there's one that gets to make a bystander. And last year's winner that made a bystander was Scott Crampton. This kind of breaks the rules they had previously established for making bystanders, yeah. which is really weird. Scott Porter said, like, it can't be, like, yourself or, like, a real person. It has yeah. to be, like, so a generic thing, like a nurse or a doctor Scott or something. Scott Porter didn't win, but, like, they made that bystander they made him initially. for the initial event. Right. It was only online. The winner of the only online one, because this is now, we're coming into the third year of the hunting. Movement. Yes. The, the winner of the first online made Spirit of the Game. Game. Which is, like, an idea, you know? Yeah. It's not, like... Just himself. Uh, and the rule's kind of broken here. Uh, so Scott Crampton made himself in the game. He put his little OC character into Hero Clicks, which is really funny. Uh, he gave himself some keywords that are not going to exist anywhere else. Four Points Gaming Club and the Podcaster keyword. So I guess once we finally get made into Hero Clicks, we know what keyword we're getting. We're at least getting Podcaster. Oh, oh. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, And then Detective. So Detective is at least the normal keyword that he can actually be on Teams. This is kind of funny. So his whole thing is that he's part of the four points like gaming club team. So he has four range, he has four speed, he has four attack, four defense, and four damage, which is the only stat that's good. Um, and then he's yeah. cost four points, which is the first time in years that we've had a non five divisible by a five, so a, a zero or a five on the right. point cost, which is cool. Uh, he has traits, so you're like, how is this figure playable at all? Besides a cheap four point enhancement, uh, that's this trait makes him playable. It's called critical clicks. Scott Crampton only deals damage on a critical hit, so that's kind of neat. So critical clicks, critical hit, you kind of see the thematic thing there. And then it also gives him free, make an attack. And then slash slash, another part of the trait is Scott Crampton is adjacent to a friendly character. Lines of fire drawn to him are hindered, which makes his stealth always useful, as long as he's adjacent to a friendly character. So he can't be shot clear from the back of the map. Uh, he can make a free attack, and maybe he rolls a critical hit. And it's kind of funny, they were mentioning yeah. in the live stream how... The Scott Porter Pog makes the Scott Panther Pog a little bit better because his Perplex uh, lets you roll a critical hit on a 10 through 12 versus just a 12. So it can maybe, maybe you just pop off for five damage. I mean, for four points, he gets to make one attack for free. Yeah. Sure. I mean, might as well. And he's also an enhancement. So if you have any, like, I feel like range this, on this figure is not, or this Pog, this yeah. bystander, uh, it's not bad because defend exists, obviously. Also that. Um, you can also, not that it would matter, but you can do stuff like Iron Spider to like copy an attack power. Right, he still has to. Attack value, yeah. I mean. Uh, the thing is, like, yeah, with a 14, you quite literally would need to critical he's, he hit. He still has to critical hit no matter what. Two hit most defenses. Like, yeah. And you would actually be too low on most defenses. But yeah, it's mostly that damage being four, and then a critical hit means that it's like five if he pulls it off. And then just four points for enhancement is yeah. kind of nuts. Um, yeah, cheapest enhancement like, does make sense though made. that you know critical clicks only hitting on a critical hit because only like one in twelve of their podcasts is worth listening. Oh, to. 
Hey, uh, delete that 30 seconds of silence at the beginning of your episodes. That was hilarious. Uh, so these are ridiculous now. Oh yeah, roll. Yeah, I think this one's the first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Scott, they did this funny little bit where Scott Crafter was like, yeah, so my, my bystander's better than your bystander. And then Scott Porter would say, yeah, but I have hero clicks figures. I'm not just a bystander. So that was kind of a neat thing. So Simeon, tell us about the first, <laughs> the first of two, two Scott Porter figures yes. that are being made. So more so, self inserts than ever before. It's right. incredible. Scott Porter is, he's holding up a brick of, I think they're both the same brick. Right? I, it looks like they are. I think. Um, I think they're both power bomb. Power bomb. Yeah, so they're both yeah. power bomb bricks, but there's a specifically Huntington's uh, yes. shirt. So Scott Porter in Huntington's attire uh, with blue trainers and jeans, I guess. Um, yeah, I think those are, what are those, like Reeboks or something? <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. I think he's yeah. wearing like Skechers shape-ups or something like that. <laughs> he is a dad, so it's possible. That's true. Very uh, dad-esque. So both feet. of these are unique. Uh, both of these are 25 points. Uh, this first one, however, is the, so Huntington's exclusive one, I, I should say. And Boys Kids did clarify in the chat that both of these will be purchased both from their site and uh, everything outside of like their cost to manufacture and shipping stuff whatever. will be donated to Huntington's. So very cool that like one, these aren't going to be exclusively hard to get for just people that show up at the event, but like anyone can get them. Yeah. And also um, it's all going to charity, which is awesome. I'm glad they're not like, Hey, only like a dollar or two is going to charity. So exactly. it's pretty cool that they're doing that. Uh, so Scott Porter's dial, he's got sidestep. He's only four clicks long sidestep for all four clicks with six speed uh, and 11 attack. He's got telekinesis on his top click. And then he has a special defense power for all four clicks. First two clicks are perplex, and then last two clicks are prob. But the prob's going to be mm, maybe unnecessary yeah. because of one of his traits. So he comes in with four traits, or three traits, sorry, and four one buildings. special power. Yeah. So his first trait is comics knowledge and acting roles. He only has the celebrity keyword, but when establishing theme teams, choose any keyword and then choose a team ability that another friendly character or opposing character has on their dial. This game, Scott Porter has the chosen keyword and team ability, which wow, is pretty crazy. It doesn't say uh, a team ability that can't be copied, so I feel like he probably yeah. could get cosmic, cosmic energy. energy. Yeah. That's probably like a big one. During game setup, if Scott Porter is part of a theme team, increase the result of your roll for a first player by plus one. That is worth it's noting. Dang good. Yeah. Because, I, mean, yeah, I mean, at most, you can now, be a plus three, but now you can four. be a plus four. Uh, he has... Fight for a Cure, which is support, and uh, we know that support got a big boost, so that's awesome. And then at the beginning of your turn, he just heals a friendly character one click. No range, no line of fire, no adjacency needed. Wow! Just map wide. At the beginning of your turn, you heal somebody every turn going forward. That seems nuts. That seems That's pretty wild. insane for 25 for points 25 with points. everything else he also gets to If heal. I'm playing like a 250-point piece in this guy, and then my 250-point piece is just hard Always to heal Always to heal, yeah. Like, they have to go after him. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, his last trait is counting on the community. If Scott Porter is part of a theme team, which a Scott Porter plus one single character is a theme team. So sure. Uh, he starts the game with three community tokens. If he has any community tokens, once per turn, you may re-roll any roll. Wow. If you do, after resolutions, remove wow. a community token. So it's only three times per game and only if he's on a theme team. Hmm. But it's map-wide, regardless of line of fire. And then... As he's doing that, he can reroll attacks, breakaways, which are normal prob things. He can also reroll blades, super senses. Uh, yeah, any kind any, of effect. Any just roll, like period. ultimate nullifier. Any, I mean, it, yeah. literally anything. It's kind of insane. But then his uh, final power is his defense power. It's super senses. Friendly characters modify defense plus one when adjacent to a friendly character that shares a keyword with them. Wow. Yeah. Friendly characters wow. modify defense plus one if they're next to somebody that has a keyword. So, a keyword that is shared with them. So, it's a good super senses. It's a super senses he can re-roll in most situations. And then also, in addition to that, he's going to be in 19 most likely because he's sharing a keyword with at least one person. Honestly, I would just leave him in my starting area. 
I why why is not? I have two just, global effects right. that are just nuts. TK that guy out. I kind of see a little bit for perplex, and then yeah, just chill. There's, there's not a lot to outwit on him, but even if no. there was, like he can pick cosmic energy most likely. Right, mystics. Um, you know, top cow. I don't He's know. doing an insane amount of stuff. This is like. I don't know, some of the best 25 points you can spend, basically, right now. Quite, it's nuts. quite literally the map wide, any reroll. Craziest 25 Automatically points. heal, being a turn, or even just sidestep, you know, power to support. He has TK, he has perplex, he has normal prob. He's, he's literally insane. I don't know how you don't, if you're playing theme, how you don't play this guy. It's yeah. nuts. Equip him with uh, Stones of Merlin, and he's got like a little bit longer dial. Um, yeah, just all around a pretty nuts figure. Now onto the, the Piper. Yeah, the, 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 the power, the power bomb. bomb guy here. So this one has like a white shirt, Wizkid's logo. He also has an insane amount of abilities. Only two traits, and he's got a special attack and a special defense. Let's get into it. Uh, Scott Porter has all the keywords even when he's not on the map. So there's that. Uh, with being able to sideline anything, this could come up, actually, with just being able to have any keyword even when he's not on the map. So this also puts him on any team. Not as technic technically as good as the last one, but still an insane ability. And then he has just normal team player to still be able to copy a team ability. Second trait is, what is up everybody out there in Heroclix land? And at the beginning of the game, so this is a reference to his unboxings. That's what he says at the beginning of each unboxing. Uh, if Scott Porter is on a theme team, other friendly characters modify attack plus one, as long as Scott Porter is on the map. Then slash, at the beginning of the game, if all other friendly characters from uh, the same Heroclix set on your team, uh, they also modify damage value plus one. So it's kind of like how he always just unboxes like one set at a time. So now he modifies their damage value plus one, their attack value plus one. If they're a theme team, all from the same set. Very similar, maybe better than collectors. So there are some sets points. that just have an insane amount of good figures yeah. or an insane sub theme in them. So he makes them better again for 25 points. And then he has his power bomb special attack is knockback pulse wave, but doesn't target friendly characters. So again, super good. He does just have sidestep with four range, which is the normal pulse wave range, but he's got prob to help reroll it. So that's also just really good. And then he has, all the way at the end of his dial, is stop regeneration. When he uses it, heal each adjacent friendly character one click. And that's the what's in the cup today, a reference to, again, his unboxing. This is a very specific to his unboxing video type figure where it's him going like, oh, this is Crystal Pepsi or this is some kind of coffee or something yeah. that he had in his cup. This figure is also really stupid good for 25 points. The map-wide plus one attack and damage is insane. He also just has prob, top dial, and then pulse wave. Yeah, these Scott Porter figures are kind of nuts. Uh, yeah. They're kind of insanely good for their I, points. I feel like it's worth picking both of them up. Um, yeah. And possibly even worth playing both on like a team together. Why not? Why not? Because you can you can be a theme team and then you get so many good bonuses if you do that. And it's only 50 points. It's insane yeah. the amount of like uh, potential that you get out of these. stuff that yeah. a 25 point character can do. Yeesh. His boxes are kind of neat. They have a blank side uh, for autographs, as you can see up there. So that's kind of cute if he actually like autographs them and stuff. That makes the box a little, little cooler to display and everything. And now they mentioned some of the 2023 convention exclusives. Now we haven't heard anything about these before, and they name drop a handful. Before we get into these next three, they name drop my personal favorite, uh, Captain America on a Pegasus, which is what was missing from War of the Realms. So that's really cool. They mentioned Rainbow Superman, Mermaid Batman, some very weird DC ones. Hanna-Barbera Joker, Joker. Uh, yeah. which is also really cool. And then they, uh, another Gwen, another Gwen Thor. Yeah, I don't know if it's Gwen, Gwen Thor, Thor, or if we're just getting yet again another it Gwen would be Goddess of get, Thunder. Yeah, Gwen Goddess of Thunder yeah. when we just got one, but maybe. Like, we maybe. have gotten double down on figures like that before, so possible. So tell us about, this is again <laughs> an insane amount of stuff. Yeah. This Wonder Woman that we get to see, I believe a Hanna-Barbera... I assume that she's wearing the classic Wonder Woman. Yeah, costume. I can't remember what. But it Scott says All Holder. Star Comics. So. Yeah, he said like Wonder Woman through the ages kind of thing. So um, she has Amazon Justice League Deity Past and Warrior. No uh, Justice Society keyword. Oh, so sad. So, uh, she has the Wonder Woman team ability, as you would expect at this point. She has two traits and two special powers. So her top dial, she'll have access to everything, and that's at 150 points. Uh, Ten clicks long at 150 yeah. points. So her first trait is when another friendly character with the Amazon keyword takes damage from an attack after resolutions, you may place Wonder Woman adjacent to that character, which is pretty cool. Getting her up into the fight, like, you know, you don't want to attack somebody if you don't realize that, like, she's just going to bop over there. 
and then she has Hephaestus's armor. During force construction, up to three friendly characters with the Amazon keyword may be assigned equipment without paying the equipment's cost. So that's pretty nuts. Um, not being assigned that's the wild. equipment's cost uh, as long as they have the as an Amazon keyword, but obviously in silver, I guess, because Wonder Woman will probably rotate after next Worlds. Um, yeah. There's good chance of that. There will be a lot of stuff in silver that you can equip to those Amazon Wonder Women that already have like shifting kind of shenanigans oh, to yeah, do Yeah, it will be wild. Uh, then she's got charge sidestep. She's got, I mean, I'm not going to go over the full stats, but she has good stats for both point values. Yeah. Uh, and then her damage power for her first five clicks is empower and free. Choose an opposing character within four squares in line of fire. That character can't use damage powers until mm. your next turn, which mm. is better than outwit. Most of the time. Even better than the common order one that we saw in Batman. We did a similar thing, but she had to she had to hit. Right. Next up, this is a really sweet looking version of Venom. Like, wow, just check that out. We have Venom God of the Symbiotes. Symbiote Cosmic DD Monster Keywords. 270 points or 150 points for a 11 click long dial at 270 is wild. Uh, let's get into his traits here. So, Shape Change, Steel Energy, God of Hunger. When Venom, God of Symbiotes, uses Steel Energy, instead of healing, he may generate a Symbiote Bystander. You can see the Symbiote Bystander on the screen. Very solid stats, very solid abilities, really good. He also, keep in mind, ignores characters and elevated this entire time. He also has really insane stats that you would want a 270 point figure to have. Second trait, King of All Symbiotes. Leadership, at the beginning of your turn, Venom God of Symbiotes may just generate a Symbiote. So he also just gets to make one automatically at the beginning of your turn, which is kind of wild. If Venom God of Symbiotes is 270 points, he may generate it adjacent to a friendly character named Symbiote or has the Symbiote keyword. I like that he's 270, because that means you can literally play the 30-point Symbiote yeah. from uh, Beyond Amazing. Or Scott Porter. Make it next. Or Scott Porter. And make it a theme piece. Uh, and then he has a special speed power for his first five clicks, so he will get it on his 150-point line just for one click which is charge when Venom God Symbiote uses it before moving. He may choose a friendly character named Symbiote or with the Symbiote keyword. If he does, place him and the chosen character in each other's squares. A little, little switching around, he can charge up. Whoa, he can switch it around before moving. It's kind of neat. It's kind of cool. You can yeah. send Symbiote out there and then boom, yeah. Venom move from the all the way up to its out of value. nowhere. Then Venom switch goes Venom. to charge, switches. Yeah. He gets basically a free TK, but it's better because it's further. It's way for Yeah. So he's... Totally designed to work with the rare symbiote from Beyond Amazing. And then his defense power is an infinite number of host bodies. Impervious, when Venom, God of Symbiotes, uses it, increases his result by plus one for each friendly character named Symbiote. If there are four or more friendly characters named Symbiote, Venom, God of Symbiotes, can reduce penetrating damage. So this all works not only with that one Symbiote, but of course, his Symbiote bystander is also just named Symbiote. So... Yeah. There's a lot of shenanigans. I like this for a, a tentpole or one-man army because he's kind of making other little smaller bits that help him do everything better. This is a really good design for a one-man army and feels super, super cool for a Venom. I like it. It's what you kind of want a con exclusive to be, a fun alternate version of a character we already know that's just kind of unique and wacky and also kind of good. I really yeah. like it. I like it a lot. If you ignore the symbiotes for too long, then Venom's hard to deal with. Yeah, really but if is. you deal with just the symbiotes, then Venom's hitting you for a lot. Next up, we've got Space Ghost. Yeah, out of nowhere, like, okay, wow. Seriously. First appearance from Space Ghost. Uh, real name, Tad Ghostal. Oh, did uh, not know that. That's yeah. cool. He has the celebrity, cosmic, and police keyword. So obviously, Hanna-Barbera was tapped into, and now there's more leaking of the Hanna-Barbera property yeah. coming out, it seems. I'm excited, so, dude. This is really cool. He has uh, two traits and a special attack power. He's got an 80-point line, a 60-point line, and a 30-point line. So for full dial, you get um, you get leadership, you get some toughness, you get an attack power, his whole dial. So he's got stealth, super senses, and uh, super strength Ooh. for his first trait. That's Pretty invisibility good. and intangibility. And then he's got... Jan, Jace, and Blip as his other trait that is Perplex. If Space Ghost has no action tokens, he can use it twice a turn. When Space Ghost uses Perplex and targets a friendly character, that character has safeguard opposing probability control until your next turn. Wow. Which is a little uh, throwback to like spooktacular kind of stuff. It is, yeah. Was yeah, that Bobby? Uh, I don't know. One of the children did that. Yes. But uh, And then his special attack power is the Power Bands. 
free, choose one for Space Ghost to use until he chooses again. Energy Explosion, Penetrating Psychic Blast, Energy Shield Deflection, and Vulnerability. Jeez. Or Force Blast as free and Telekinesis. And then he's got the Team Player Team ability. He's got five range, two lightning bolts, and he's a flyer. He's, he's good. Super fun. He's he's really good and really fun. And uh, his 30-point line is charged with close combat expert, printed 10 attacks, so he's an 11 for four with all that other stuff that he can pick. Yeah. He's doing a lot. He's a ton of fun. I think he doesn't disappoint. If you're a Space Ghost fan, and I would have never seen this coming at all, but if you were really yeah. wanting him in Heroclix and you saw Scooby-Doo and you're like, there's a chance... I think he shows up, and I don't think he disappoints. But guys, that is everything that they unveiled during the Scott Porter for Huntington's live stream. Go ahead and let us know in the comments section below what you like the most out of all of this. Are you as excited to see all these things in Heroclix as we are? Because I know I am. But seriously, guys, and if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Dial H for Heroclix to see more videos. Hit that bell button so you can get notifications every time we post a new video. And like always... Happy trails.